Okie dokie. Check everything out. Make sure the stream is running here on YouTube. Is it live? Takes a second to catch up. Says it's streaming. Is it streaming? Oh! Haha! <laughs> Alright, cool. Make sure there's audio. This iPad's upside down. Is it streaming? Perfect. Oh, smacking everything. What is this? I don't like. Get out of here. All right. Welcome, Woe. Okay. So I'm here to continue working on my templates my terrain templates for revelations battlefield getting ready for the kickstarter i tried to find something different for music today compared to what we've normally done so uh we'll see how how long it lasts oh i left my drink over here I've never listened to this music before, so I have no idea. It's from another creator here on YouTube. Um, and he said, you can use my music. There's no DMCA, no nothing. I'm like, all right, good enough for me. Okay. So last time we were here, for those who are tuning in later, I worked on the woods tiles and got those all finished. Uh, painted all the trees, did the borders here, and then did the black for the outer border. And I feel like they turned out really well. So what I'm doing here now is I'm moving through with the rugged. I went, uh, they were obviously already base coated. I did a wash on them last night. And now I'm going through with this yellow okra. And they, I think they pop really well. And once it gets done, I'll, I'll you know, go back over and do the, the, uh, this ivory for the borders and then black on the, the frame of it. So I've finished three of the rugged so far. I'm most of the way through the first coat of the fourth. Uh, it looks pretty good on camera. You can see a little bit here for where there's some. But in person, you can see there's a lot of imperfections, so I'll, I'll go back over with the second coat and just make those uh, better. Yeah, okra. Troacryl, yellow, ochre, okra. Need to jazz up this paint a little bit more. I pronounced it the other way and someone corrected me and said it was ochre. So I was like, I think it's ochre, but whatever. It could also be a regional thing of how you pronounce it. Yeah, I, I thought it was ochre, but I was on the fence. Just so you're almost done with current job, meaning your two weeks is almost up. <laughs> oh, no. To get the paint out, and I just touched all the wet paint. Oh, whoops.
Now, I feel like this somehow zoomed in a little bit more. That works. Right. Trying really hard not to get my head through in the frame for the entire stream would be an achievement. Tomorrow's the last day. Woohoo! What? Keep it in mind for how to pronounce it next time. <laughs> I wish YouTube had some of the other features like Twitch has and stuff where you can have, you can set up, you know, custom sound effects and stuff, which, just because then it would be interesting it is one of the upsides to Twitch, except that Outside of that, Twitch is a, not my favorite platform. <laughs> We'll end up with a similar turnout today as we did the other day. So far, not so yet. So I know you saw the uh, the list of stretch goals earlier today, Whoa! I'm curious, I have my hunch, but I'm curious, which of the stretch goals was your favorite? That you're really, really, really hoping makes it. Go back for the second one. I thought about just doing these and like setting them aside and then I'd come back for the second one, but I feel like my enthusiasm for doing them 
needs to be protected because I feel like I'm accomplishing something. And if I have to come back and pick it back up to do the same color again, my enthusiasm drops. It doesn't take as long to do the second coat anyway. I'm just touching up bad spots. Okay, okay, texture basis is good. It's been an interesting uh, challenge because they uh, are not as easy as I thought they would be to be created. <laughs> I feel like this particular song is not, it's either very accurate or it's way off for this. <laughs> oh, it's over, so. I don't know if I can do this. I may have to change the music to something else. It can't distract me while I'm painting. Make me laugh. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear that in the background. <laughs> Only half? Sad face. Only half of the scratch boys. Oh, I gotta change this. I need something familiar, but decent. Yeah, those will all be very fun. Now, a number of people have wanted to see VTOLs happen for a while. And now they have a chance. This isn't good. I'm at the beginning of the stream and I just got really hungry all of a sudden. Ah. Surprised you didn't have five skulls listed. steak ow microphone hand ow
Of course, because five skulls would be cool. Hmm. Stretch goals are always difficult, though, because it's always like, well, how ambitious <laughs> do you want to appear? I usually go for a little bit more conservative, but you know, I was like, you know what? Heck with it. See what happens. Let's put some stretch goals up there that are a lot higher. See what happens. Once these are done, we got walking still to do, and then infantry, because I need to paint up a couple teams of infantry using the new, uh, using the new bases. Battlefield. That will be fun-ish. Infantry are kind of like painting terrain. They can be, they're not, you know, they don't get all the cool treatment like, uh, like mechs do. I'll certainly appreciate it. Every, every bit of a uh, shilling is appreciated. <laughs> for a, 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 a bigger campaign this time to uh, help jumpstart some bigger stuff because even you know outside of those things that are listed as the stretch goals the money helps open up doors for other projects that I don't want to put on there because it would be something like artwork right like you don't really you don't really make it a stretch goal like, oh, there'll be a new picture. Nobody really cares about that. They want they want something they can play with. But that new artwork helps, you know, the the game overall. Because it's the cover for some new product or you know, something you use for awareness campaign. Touch that right there. This one's about to the point where I'm going to say, heck with the imperfections, I need to move on. Because I could sit here forever touching stuff up. Well, that one's down. The conscripts do. I feel that the um, Marines take me a little bit longer of the shield the centurions are pretty easy
Don't behave, paintbrush. Don't start fraying. We have a lot of work to do. Looking forward to being able to start recording those uh, how to plays and stuff for Battlefield. What is like pushing me to get these done and just like keep going, keep going. I don't want to paint anymore. Too bad. Keep going. Those videos will be a big difference from what we had last time when we did the skirmish campaign. I mean, granted, there is like a how to play, but it's not really the same as like doing, you know, ones for that campaign or updated and whatnot. hear that yeah come on I guess at the moment, whoa, it's just you and me here. Well, and I appreciate that, because at least it's not as lonely as it could be. <laughs> I knew there was always going to be a chance that doing, you know, streaming in the middle of the day, at least middle of the day for us, um, was going to be potentially dicey, and that's okay. The point is to begin building a, a consistency that people know about and hopefully from there things will just continue to grow you have any projects that you are kind of in the middle of right now speaking of painting I 
know with the job change and everything, you probably don't have as much time, but... Totally missed where I was painting. Okay, yeah, I saw something that you had posted on the server, and I, I was like, I bet that's Ravage Star. Mostly just a palette cleanser for Max. Yeah, I gotcha. As as uh, tedious as these things are, whoops. It is good oh. for uh, brush control. Good hands-on practice for that. Uh, I don't this. I didn't think I had seen you posting anything that you've been painting recently except for uh, Blackout. I've seen new pictures that you have you just not taken pictures of stuff that you've been doing because I don't I can't remember. it's been like three months since I remember seeing anything that you had done of revelations at least it feels like it it, it could just be misrecalling because nobody's been posting anything for the castaways campaign for the last two months. Okay. So I'm not crazy about that. Yeah. Those uh, depression and uh, stress absolutely affect uh, productivity of, <laughs> of all kinds. really posted except outside of the sparrow and the novich i haven't posted anything myself either i actually haven't really been painting i've been dealing with my own head funk for a little while so now coming out of that on the other side i feel like oh my goodness there's a ton of projects But if we're able to keep going with the streaming, then just naturally there'll be more stuff done because kind of has to happen. <laughs>
Oh, new game. What was that? Warzone Eternal. What? I haven't even heard of that. Who makes it? Welcome to the other people that are jumping into the stream. Heidi. Heidi. I don't know. Howdy. Over here slowly losing my mind painting lines. Ow. Painting outside the lines too. Being mad at myself. game paired with the mutant chronicles okay I, I mean there's so many other games out there that i've never heard of so it's not really like anything against them make another subtle mistake sure why not I just keep making steady progress through these they'll they'll get knocked out third iteration. Wow, so they've been around for a little bit with that. That's cool. It's cool to see games stick around enough to be able to do that. <laughs> Especially for smaller studios. I feel like at some point I'm going to unlock like the perfect angle skill or something on this and it's just going to be like, you know, jam, 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 except then like right there where I rushed and now I have to fix it. Third studio. Oh, so, okay. So the IP has been moved around a little bit. Oh. Fast cannot go. I could time myself on one of these just to see. I feel like I'm getting faster. I don't really know if that's a useful skill. I mean, it is because I still have three more to go, but. And then we start getting to the, the fun part, because when I'm painting on the ivory, it's when it really starts bringing it together. And then the black goes a lot faster for the border, because that's just a lot easier to do. Oh, cool. 
I, mean, I got a couple new games that I'm I bought that I'm looking to try. I'm wanting to do a uh, hybrid game that I've been kind of feeling like the idea is floating around in my head for a, a dice game that I could set in Revelations, and I've been like, nope, I'm not allowed to do it until the Battlefield campaign gets started. Because <laughs> what'll happen is I'll get really into it, and then that'll be what I want to work on. So I have to, so I just keep feeling it at the back of my mind, just being like, let me be creative. Think about me. No. Not yet. But I guess it's a good, a good thing because, you know, you get ideas for stories or for new products or entirely new universes or something, IPs all together. And sometimes those ideas don't stick around very long. You're like, ah, that was just something that sounded fun, but I wasn't really like super into it. This this hybrid game will not leave me alone. It's coming up on a month now that the idea has been like hovering in the back of my mind. Uh, it won't be gambling i've been wanting to make a game that is accessible for people who are in wheelchairs um that can still play like the full game and like skirmish revelation skirmish would be very difficult for someone in a wheelchair to be able to play they could but they would require a lot of assistance so i've wanted to make a game that someone in a wheelchair can play the full game without needing the ability to be able to stand. Um, so it's, it's a project I'm interested in personally. And, uh, I think it'll be fun. If I can do all the loose, you know, rattling around ideas that I have. <laughs> it could be fun. I don't think I know what that is. I think I've heard of that, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, well, and that's... Uh, um, I have a family member who's in a wheelchair, so it's it's... An interesting mental challenge because I've never had to think and I think I brought this up in a different video that uh, I wanted to make a game for him to be able to play and just realizing like well yeah but if you can't stand you can't play traditional miniature games because it's uh, you know it's, it's it's kind of a whole you know they go together Yeah, well, and I want, but before I try to get it out into the other communities, then I, I want to uh, make sure the game works in a in a beta or alpha sense. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was the Star Wars game. Yeah, because I I've, I've obviously aware that there are communities out there for th that sort of thing like an accessibility uh gaming accessibility community so once if and when the product can move forward then obviously we want to involve or notify them that that is something that we have created I think there's a chance to have something that uh, potentially, because I don't know if someone else has done it, potentially it could be a new subgenre.
but I don't want to get like way ahead of myself and then be like, oh, I invented a new, a new way to game. Be like, oh no, you didn't. Someone else has already done this. I tried to design Battlefield with the mentality of that also in mind, which is why it worked. It was designed to work with these flat templates, because then at least someone in a wheelchair can see everything. But because it's still at the engine of it, a traditional war game, then uh, it does. Uh, I don't know how difficult it still is for someone in a wheelchair. Or who would, you know, basically difficulty standing, really. Because you could just sit in a chair and just still play, but you're still limited in your mobility. The upside is, if this new Kickstarter does well enough, there will be some opportunity for some other really, really, really fun things because I'll have a little bit of freedom to explore some stuff creatively and not be um, as concerned about things. Okay, got through that pretty painlessly. Well, how quickly can we get through this second coat? Move on to the next one. You ever get to that point where you're painting and you're like, I'm so sick of this color. <laughs> it definitely happens to me when I'm airbrushing. Because I might be doing like a whole big batch of models that are using the same paint scheme. So by the time I'm done with that session of airbrushing, I'm like, I'm just so sick of blue or, you know, whatever. Especially yellow. <laughs> My bad.
I need to get back to my castaways project. I've only painted one all the way of my, that was not my intention. It just transition to full time. Wasn't as graceful as what I would have liked. And if given the opportunity to continue in the next couple of months, I'm going to be changing how I was doing things, which I mean, like even doing this, like this is the first step to changing that. No, it definitely is, and I... Spent time doing other things, or maybe feeling like... I wasn't sure what the right choice was sometimes, and... You find yourself wasting time going in the wrong direction, or doing things you're like, This is a stupid thing to do, why am I doing this? So I want to get back to... Just making a, a, a basics kind of thing and just stick to that instead of trying to stretch too far. Slim. I think I got a decent rhythm going now. Plus, I really want to be done with them. I know this is one of those things where when I'm done, I'm going to be like, I'm so glad I put the time and effort in. It looks so good. I was really happy with how the images came out for the woods tiles. It's not the most exciting thing, but it's one of those like we well, just it's a necessity thing. I 
thought about streaming something else, but I was like, but this is what I'm doing. So, this is what I'm streaming. It'll be what it'll be. Tell you what it won't be. It's messed up. We'll fix that. Home stretch, home stretch. Those are just like moving and grooving, everything's great. And I just keep flipping messing up. Ah, it's making it worse. At least it's one of those things that like it's okay to be a little messy. It doesn't have to be uber uber perfect. I just wanted to not look bad in images. I don't want it to be a distraction for how bad it looks kind of thing. Done with this one. I don't do that. Appreciate that, Will.
Oh, that one's done. Well, for that point. You know what? I'm going to do the L. Because I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit easier. But thankfully, I made sure to keep these little tiny teeth marks here so I have to decide if I'm going to paint those or not. <laughs> well, I probably should. Well, I got to do those ones up there then, too. For consistency's sake. Wow, it's already 3.30. What do I need? I need to mix this. I guess I'll just use this. Try to see if I can find a different position. Oh, gosh. <laughs> different position. Frick. So I stopped hitting this damn thing. <laughs> Keep smacking the microphone. No, stop. Your brush is fighting me now. Stop it. Behave yourself. You have a lot of work to do. You can't be... be crapping out on me now. Oh, you're like toast. Nope. Get sent over there then. I had these cheaper paint brushes that I got for Christmas a couple years back at this point. And just gonna keep using them until they can't be used no more. I'd rather get the value out of them. Especially for projects like this where you don't need uber, uber precision. See, we have a couple people watching. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. I have tons of brushes, I just, I don't know, got to make use of what you got.
And it's not like I'm a professional painter in the sense I'm out there trying to win awards or anything. So I can make my less than desirable paintbrushes work. Although I'm sure anybody that knows what they're doing is watching is like, oh gosh, why would you use such nasty brushes? This is, it's nasty work. such a weird shape who made this why am i having to do this oh, yeah this was my idea Whoops is probably like the worst word to say while you're painting. It's not quite as bad as hearing it while you're having like surgery done on you. But it's in that realm. right up there with where did I put my scissors with the surgeon <laughs> I know I had them huh. well I'll just get another one off Amazon way to do this maybe this way attack it from a different angle change your perspective it's 
Surprise your enemies. Never let them know your next move. I love putting paint where paint's not supposed to go. It's my... Oh, I got paint on my table. I removed it. With the power of friction! Alright, one more time. I just hit the microphone one more time and I'll feel complete. My entire freaking day. I did that so much the other day. <laughs> I ended up <laughs> breaking the paintbrush. I was so mad. I didn't. I mean, the paintbrush still works. I just made it shorter so that it wouldn't keep hitting. The light. <laughs> I'm gonna slide it over a little bit, maybe, so I stop hitting it so much. Realistically, there's really no reason that I need a paintbrush this long. Like, really. I mean, if it was, like, to here, that'd be more than enough for me to control it. I know some of the other miniature brand paintbrush manufacturers, they make theirs a little bit shorter, but most of them are still pretty average. No, I don't want a bigger brush. <laughs> Although I would be hard pressed that if given the opportunity and the genie was like, hey, what would you want? It'd be like a paintbrush that never misses. Always does what I'm trying to get it to do. be phenomenal i wouldn't use a wish on it i would just try to see if i could trick the genie into giving it to me for free but i, I wouldn't be upset that i had it. i guess you figured out the key then to how to make it work the, the handles themselves specifically. I mean, the the brushes, like the bristles, don't really need to be longer than what they are on this one for miniature painting. If I'm, you know, if I was doing some sort of canvas painting, I, I suppose a longer, uh, longer bristles may come in handy depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. No, go there. <laughs> Night doesn't go there either.
I may have thought this one was going to be harder, but I'm feeling like it's actually easier than the last one. But I know the next two are pretty monstrous. And that's okay. Once I do one set of these, I may never do them again. Kickstarter revelation takes off, but much to Rick's horror, the community becomes. It what? <laughs> I can't help with that. Y'all gonna have to figure that out on your own if that happens. That would definitely be something I wasn't prepared for. Absolutely would be like, oh, this is a weird set of events now. I don't think they've ever had a uh, a contest for sexiest creator alive <clears throat> for like game creators that would be uh, an interesting award very interesting award I don't think I would rank high enough but it would be nice to be nominated <laughs> No, I don't want to see that. Can't disrespect Mikhail like that. Rule 34 needs to stay well away from anything that I'm aware of, of my work. Just, just keep your, your naughtiness out, out of here. Exposed to the debauchery, the depravity.
have you told him that he would rank that high? <laughs> the man has a very cool voice. It's not really fair, but neither is life. Wait. Oh. I didn't totally come up with it. I spring I, I just sprung off of your comment. I didn't come up with this on my own. That needs to be on the record. Dr. Rhino, I don't even know who that is. And like Hooray, I, I beat out big African rhino. But he, it's a rhino with a doctorate, though. So, I mean, like, it's not a normal rhino. It's, it's so yellow. It's not really yellow. It's, it's so ochre. Ochre. Uh. Dr. Rhino is the guy working with Thunderhead on his game. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I wasn't actually entirely certain if uh, Thunderhead was still working on his game. It is interesting that he still is, though. Do you know, like, what the setting is? Is it a sci-fi game, fantasy? Because I've, I've heard him loosely discuss that he was going to work on a game, but I don't think I ever knew the setting or anything. There's so much yellow on my palette. Just yellows and oranges. I've done a lot of that the last year. Need to venture into some blues or something for a while. Living in the land of a oranges and yellows and browns. Oh, Sci-fi? Okay, okay, okay.
Humanity traveled to the stars and now is in a new solar system fighting for survival. Okay. Could be interesting. I imagine he won't do anything that's, you know, like halfway attempt, so it'll it'll be cool to see once it's ready. Oh, cool. I guess it's not like super secretive then if he's got its own Discord. But he's probably also not sharing a great deal just yet. I'm not shocked by that. I know you're already in like 80,000 different discords. Has he announced like when he's planning on releasing or I don't know if he's doing Kickstarter or what he's planning on doing. I guess just a release schedule or plan or something. If you have a hundred people in there, you're not going to really keep that quiet. There's no way it's too many people. Unless you're all in a cult. Are you in a cult? Okay, next Adepticon. Neat. Oh, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. You're only in a hundred Discord. I say only. <laughs> like that's a lot. But I know you won't you won't be as a, as active in all of them cuz it's just you would have to be a, a Discord moderator and they don't have a good reputation on the internet. <laughs>
it's a it's a pretty cool ability I'm here to make connections with your people but I'm not going to tell you ha ha I'm doing it for my sinister plots of connecting people ha 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 you can't stop me can't stop the signal <laughs> I guess that is a way to get your your podcast out there. Freehand, totally freehand. Totally freehand. Call me Michelangelo. You failed. Michelangelo, ah, failing. Where's dang fuzzies coming from. It would definitely be for the lulls, one hundred percent. No, stop. Done. Oh. Took just about thirty minutes to do that. Oh man. I think the blocking ones will go easier because they're big, long, straight lines as opposed to like this zigzag crap I came up with for these. I I did this to myself. I even modeled this. This is all my fault. All of it. 100%. But I'm not going to take accountability. It's Chrysala's fault. Ha! <laughs> 
they've ever done that in like an alternate universe where they they had the turtles be like painters as opposed to ninjas could be somewhat meta of itself exactly Kursala didn't warn me Kind of a teacher doesn't warn his his student, you know. It's crazy. Ow, butts. Oh, don't don't wrap me out. I saw that. It's all good things, all good things. about other things at first when we were designing the well when I was designing these it was first being like whether or not it could be printed in a way that would be clear and I accomplished that so primary goal met <clears throat> and that's okay because even when I did the trees and stuff they they were kind of I'm just whining. But really, like anything I design, anything that I come up with is pretty much anything. You know, it has its own challenges for painting anyway. I mean, he's being paid, so it's not really, like, generous per se. But, yes, I'm super grateful for the time that Priscilla does make himself available. Whoops. And he does do stuff where it... He has given me input and stuff that was like not on the clock. And I, I've done the same, not that I would bill him, but I, I, I've done the same for him. It's difficult to find other creators of the same mindset that you have the ability to talk to. So it's definitely helpful when you when you can. Uh, 
Oh, no, I was going to do these two. That's right. And then I can start smashing out the rest of this. No. no. One more time. Let it go. You know, in hindsight, I probably would have at least made the zigzags bigger so that there would be less of them. <laughs> but it's okay. But it's also part of like learning modeling. Figuring out tolerances for things or design preferences. It's all necessary for this journey. Mac on the light.
Keep thinking like man look how many zigzags i've painted surely i'm further ahead and no the answer was no i was not not as far as i thought Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. <laughs> it's crazy. Walking is going to be such a walk in the park by the time I'm done with Rugged. I'm going to be able to paint such a friggin' straight line. Sometimes. <laughs> As I say that, I have to go back and fix that. <laughs> Welcome to everyone else who's joined the stream. If you have any questions or just stuff to bring up to keep me from the slow madness I've brought upon myself with this project, let me know. Or don't. Lurk. Be spooky. ahead closer to finishing these
the joy I shall feel will be immense. So Modiphius is going is doing Roman Cthulhu models this summer. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Guess that'll be fun for the Cthulhu players out there. Eh. What up, Remy? How are you? I am painting Rugged. It's so fun. I only say that because I've been doing this for hours today. And uh, I still have a lot of work to do. But it's good because when these are done, they're going to look so good. And everyone's going to look at the pictures of like all the battlefield stuff. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I want to buy this game. And I'll be like, yep. It's because of the umpteen kabillion hours I put into painting these freaking templates. Nothing else. That is the unsung hero of the battlefield Kickstarter. <laughs> What this does it feels Roman numeral. At least you can clearly see it, right? It really stands out when it when it's actually painted. It really like jumps out. Which is the goal of my suffering. Make it count for something. Kind of like at the end of Saving Private Ryan, he's like, earn this. That's that's definitely my feeling for these templates. wipe away mistakes with this end of the paintbrush. <laughs> oh, whoops. That's fine. Go ahead and make a song for it. Exactly what you would do, but like you could you could definitely do it. I am not necessarily in need of sleep as much as just a a break from this, but sleep wouldn't like wouldn't be awful. 
I got to sleep a bunch when I was sick. And now I've been kind of cutting it back. Well, I've been getting like six hours a night. Which isn't necessarily the smartest. Must. Paint. More. Must not. Stop. <laughs> the Star Spangled Banner's got a beat to it. It's got a bop. It's a bop. Boop, beep, boop, bop. Just like this music, it's... <laughs> I think I need to change it. It's driving me a little nutty. But I also don't want to stop. I'm flowing. I'm painting. So well. Making such progress. Much wow. So how's work going for you, Remy? I haven't really talked to you lately. Not exactly certain what the the lag time is between me saying something and then someone responding. But it seems to be high. I thought it used to be like 30 seconds, which feels like an absolute eternity sometimes. Oh, something? Oh. Damn it! You make it worse. Yeah, I fixed it. there and other popular lies I tell myself Stop now. So, gosh, the issue of my stream. Oh, falling behind, not noticing. How could it fall behind? Stream slowing down? Or are you like rejoining and you're not noticing that it's not current? 
Or is time slower where you are? That could be it. That's probably the reason. It's definitely probably the reason. Are you pausing the stream? And then you didn't realize that you, when you turned it back on, it wasn't live. So then it's even further apart. Because that was, uh, I made that comment a while back, so now I'm confused. And like in 30 minutes, you're going <laughs> to answer me. Yeah. Oh, it's lag out and it doesn't jump to the latest moment. Oh, that's weird. I, I had thought that whenever you joined a stream, you automatically were sent to the current time and then you could just rewind it. But I guess if it's acting wonky, then anything, right? I love to paint lightning bolts in a yellowish color. Oh, yeah. And a minute behind is, is quite a long time when you're trying to have a conversation. Especially even at live, there's there's a there's a delay. I feel like YouTube was like thirty seconds, and then Twitch was like fifteen ish. Maybe Facebook was thirty seconds. I could start to stream on Facebook again, but I'm kind of like totally given up on Twitch because if you're not doing something that people are searching for then there's not really any point and on YouTube even though there's people not really looking for the stream specifically I'm building a library of video content so it's you know there's going to be subscribers here so makes sense in my mind you know what let's go this way with it Yeah, I, I saw that you were you were going back through those, Remy. Uh, I'm glad that they're still helpful. Um, I know I've been saying for a while I need to make some other episodes. I have a couple other ideas, but it's it's difficult, I guess. I don't know if it feels relevant because like some of the stuff that I'm thinking about that's like okay, well, this is what I'd make a video on is really about either mindset or maybe certain approaches to problems, but it's not really like, hey, do this and you make a game. Hey, do this, you know. I mean, I guess, I don't know, I might be putting too much pressure on myself because, you know, there's not that many people that listen to them, so it's really whatever I want to talk about. But I want it to feel like it's worth listening, not just me rambling or me discussing things that are in a direction you're like, yeah, this is cool and all, but it, like, I don't give a crap. <laughs> Help me with this, Rick. <laughs> yeah, no, they mindset appro and, and approaches are definitely useful. It's definitely when you're kind of starting out, but I didn't really want the, the podcast to become like that specifically. And I feel like it kind of was starting to. I 
Well, the big issue with my game, and then I listened to an episode and getting a new one I didn't realize I needed to solve. <laughs> I'm glad I could help show you there was a problem. <laughs> Maybe if the podcast ever gets bigger, I'll have a co-host. At the time, the last episode I think I made was I was going to be working on Warfleet, and then that didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, so I never went back and... continued although you know like at this point i also made it was not a miniature game but i did make another uh family game that i'm <laughs> almost not the wrong end of the cup. uh that i've gleaned some information from that i designed that is testing very i entirely missed that Look at that. I missed that right there. It completely skipped it. Anyway. Um. And uh, I was telling uh, Woe earlier, Remy, that I'm I, I have this idea for another type of game that I want to design that... Um, could totally work for someone who's like wheelchair bound or can't really stand because for miniature gaming you know it's kind of a big deal to be able to right to be able to see the table and to be able to get all the information you need you kind of need to be able to stand um so I'm, i've had this idea for another game but i've been restricting myself until the kickstarter for battlefield kicks off uh because I don't want to get super into being creative on that and then not be able to finish the and launch the Kickstarter. Because we are kind of on a restricted timetable here. So it needs to happen soon. Fifteen ideas for factions. My goodness. Yeah. Then in every game's gonna have its own, you know, uh, restrictions, because it really, I mean, a lot of it comes to money. How much can you develop? I mean, when we get to the fourth year birthday anniversary of Skirmish, I mean, there's now going to be seven playable factions? Right? Union, Faust Union, Orca, Carlger, Pirates, yeah, and then Mercenaries, so it's technically seven. But it's cool that you have so many ideas, though, because it means your your universe has lots of sideways growth.
going to make it, but man. A lot of my goals are to make everything simple and inexpensive. Yeah, I mean, less than a hundred dollars is is nothing is nothing to sneeze at, you know. And I, I was thinking, I've been kind of wrestling with. I don't, I don't remember if this had been a video I had done because it's been a couple years for some of those episodes. Um, goodness, I lived at two different places by the time I think back on it. Um, but I've been thinking on. You know, just kind of re I'm always willing to reevaluate things and be like, you know, am I going in the right direction or do I need to make adjustments or yada, yada, yada. And I was thinking about, you know, well, should I be looking at charging for some of the rule sets, right? Not the core rule book for skirmish, but maybe battlefield or maybe whatever, right? And then I was thinking about it like, you know, one of the core reasons that I made the rules for free beyond it being a marketing tool because then people could see the rules without having to commit to paying was i wanted i remember what it was like to be a young kid teenager playing these games and not having a lot of money and they didn't have lots of rule sets that were free at the time and and i remember wanting that well during times of economic hardship, like the country is going through, depending on where you are in the, the nation, that I wanted to be able to provide entertainment for people that was virtually free. Yes, you can buy components, but you can play Skirmish completely for free if you wanted, or with very little investment. So I, I don't want to charge for the rules and some of the other necessary components because i want you to be able to play it for free obviously it'd be much better if i got paid so that everything continues but the people who don't have a lot of money can't really pay anyway so i'm not losing anything by them playing and then when they are able to then they'll buy something if they're really into the game yeah I mean, it is a deterrent because it, it's it's so expensive. Depending on which which IP you're looking at, it can be nuts. Very expensive. And that's just for the book. That's just to sit down and start reading about, do I even want to do this? If you don't already have like a group or a friend that's already in it and you've already tried it and you already kind of have vetted it, you know. Oh, I thought I just messed something up. I, you know, kind of went down the same thought of like, well, should I raise the price on the, the STLs and, you know, because they cost money to develop and then my time to test it and blah 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 and uh, you know kind of the same thing no because i want this to be accessible for people yeah it would be great if i made a hundred dollars off every time someone bought an stl but the market wouldn't sustain that anyway there wouldn't be bunches of sales right even if there were let's say a handful of customers who would pay it majority couldn't or wouldn't rightfully so um but i decided not to because i wanted the game to still be accessible and to remind myself that one of the ways i felt i have a chance to fight piracy against my product is to be like look it's cheap there's no reason not to pay for it because it's not a hundred dollars in stl fifty dollars in stl yeah, it all adds up, but you don't have to play every faction. You don't have to play every unit. So it's good to reassess. I did the math and if you have access to all rules in 40 K so you could adequately plan and prepare for any opponent. <laughs> it's 
two thousand dollars. I like my brother plays forty k pretty heavy, and he'll be like, "No, it doesn't cost that much to get into. It doesn't cost that much to play." Like, well, yeah, it might not, but nobody wants to have a list that they know is always going to lose, or at least, you know, is going to lose a lot. It's kind of like playing a card game and being like, well, yeah, I get to play this TCG, but I only have a starter and like four boosters and I want to try to win tournaments. Like, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So you have to invest to be able to play if you want to be competitive. If you're just there to have a good time, well, that's whatever. I mean, you could, you could do that totally different. Get close, boys. Like five zigzaggies left. Art STLs? What does that mean? What is an art STL? I wish to know more. Enlighten me. Oh my gosh. Stop hitting the microphone. Big thing for me to allow people to buy an expansion box and pretty much have everything you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a big component. Oh, okay. Like display pieces for art. Yeah, okay. I got you. Yeah, I imagine those may have to be more expensive, like art STL, simply because... There's not going to be the same level of buy-in from customers or players, so you can't. You have to get that money back, you know, out of it. Part of me really wishes I would have gotten through that last one of these friggin' zigzags, but it's just not gonna happen before I run out of the juice. Speaking of juice. Add a little bit more paint to finish this one off. I feel like I already did this zigzag. What the? Why is it so thin? Stop having places that look like they don't have much paint. Maybe I didn't finish this line. Anyway, that was what it was. 
got distracted. I didn't finish it. I should have seen how much time I spent on those trees that I did for the Faust Union promotion. <laughs> so many days, so much time. We need those uh, 3D printable trees for the Kickstarter. I'll be kind of going back over that. But that'll be fun because then those will be Revelations trees. And I'll be showing everyone how to paint their trees. Like trees. Those won't probably take as long because those... Part of the problem was trying to make the trees from... Was it Wish? I think I bought them from. To make those work. If they were 3D printed, it might actually be faster. <laughs> detailed stl scope would be worth 100 is yeah well yeah and because it would take a lot of uh time to develop that right is my head in the shot oh goodness this might be like the first stream ever where my head wasn't in the shot at least to my knowledge the entire time <laughs> i had to push the camera more forward so it wouldn't happen I guess it helps that this chair that I'm using now has armrests so I can kind of hold the model up without having to put my arm on the table. It was not intentional when I purchased it, I was not thinking about painting. I actually didn't even want the armrests, I was trying to figure out a way to not have them. Yeah, I haven't seen my head once, yeah. Proud of myself, becoming a pro streamer. Nope. up one other thing oh it's in two spots but you know what you can't really tell i'm gonna leave it because if i touch it i know i'm gonna mess it up i did it Let's see if there's anything that needs a little bit of touching up but I went through and touched this stuff up, but you wouldn't even be able to tell. But I friggin' did. It looks terrible in some of these spots. And I'm also really harsh on it, but...
All right. Yeah, definitely from there where the camera is. Oh boy. Well, I think I'm gonna call it there. I'm not gonna start the other one. That'll take another that last one already took like 40 minutes. Ooh. Ooh. So thank you guys for being here and hanging out. My back's a little stiff. <laughs> Uh, and then the plan is next week, Tuesday and Thursday as well for streaming, um, for the foreseeable future. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'll let people know if it's not going to happen and, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Talk to you later. <laughs>